What is up guys? This is Andrew with MyWatchAddiction.com and today we have another Kickstarter watch unboxing. Today we have the Zurich Atlasphere from Zurich Watches. This is the newest Kickstarter watch that I have received in. Matter of fact, just received it this past Friday, so I figured I'd tear this guy open and take a look at it with you. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Zurich Watches, they are a company that comes up with some pretty, pretty crazy designs and interesting ways to tell time. For instance, here is my Zurich Trappist 1. Now, the Zurich Trappist 1 is a watch that I received from a previous Kickstarter campaign. Uh, definitely check out the video on that. I'll post up a link in the description section below if you guys missed this one, but this is the Zurich Trappist 1. Today, however, we're gonna take a look at the Zurich Atlasphere. Zurich Atlasphere is the one we're gonna be taking a look at today. So guys, before we go too much further, if you have not seen my channel before, down there in the right-hand corner of that screen is that subscribe button. Go ahead and smash that guy and ding that bell if you want to get notified of any new videos that we have coming out in the future. So one of the problems I tend to have when I order Kickstarter watches is I don't necessarily remember what flavor of the watch I actually ordered, uh, and that's entirely the case with this Zurich Trap. I'm sorry, the Zurich Atlas Fear. Trap is one is what I'm wearing today. This Atlas Fear came in two different versions: the automatic and then the GMT Quartz Edition. Now I know I picked the automatic. However, I do not remember what color combination I ended up with. Packing material. One thing you'll notice about Zurich watches is they don't spend a whole lot on their presentation. They don't spend a whole lot on the boxes or the presentation of the watch itself. It's just a very, very basic box with a sleeve, as you can see here. So as we zoom in on the outside of this Zurich box, you can see the sleeve right here has a the Zurich logo printed right into the cardboard sleeve that comes on the outside of it and these always give me a problem I always fight with these especially so on this one now if you look back and you see my Zurich Trappist 1 unboxing that was just very similar presentation just a very plain cardboard box and the cardboard box that the watch came in itself was just very plain as well this one is dressed up a little bit uh, it is a cardboard box, however, it almost has like this rubbery or leather type covering to it. And then you, of course, can see Zurich embedded right there in the front of the watch box. If we open it up, there is the Zurich Atlasphere. Now, this is the Zurich Atlasphere Automatic that I received as a part of this Kickstarter campaign. Now, at the end of this video, we'll jump over to the Kickstarter campaign and see what different options were available with this specific watch um, and what we could have selected. However, this is uh, the one that I selected. If we look in here, this should be the warranty card, potentially. No, yep, warranty card right there on the back along with instruction manual for this Zurich. Atlasphere. And then of course Zurich is really good at social media marketing. If you take a look, um, they're promoting to post pictures of your watch on social media, which incidentally you will be able to see this Zurich Atlasphere on Instagram at Instagram slash watchaddiction.us. So as we zoom in a little bit closer, first thing that catches my eye with this watch is that bright red almost sunburst effect to that dial on this watch you'll notice there is a globe design on the watch that's actually imprinted into the sapphire glass that this Miyota Atlasphere is running as well the other thing that's kind of deceiving um, you can see right down here at that minute hand you see that little white dot now basically what's happening with that is the minute numbers are actually imprinted on that sapphire glass as well so as that white disc on the end of that minute hand goes around the clock that's what's making that visible to the naked eye you typically i mean you can kind of see it a little bit um 
in the Kickstarter post, it made it look like it was doing something a little bit tricky and a little bit neat, but basically it's just throwing white behind the imprinted numbers on that sapphire glass. Now this automatic is running a Miyota automatic movement with a 40 hour power reserve. I am not positive what movement this watch is running. My guess is it's likely one of the lower end ones because this guy does not have hacking ability. Uh, it does however have hand wind with that very, very small crown. The one really cool thing about the back though is kind of that weight. It almost looks like a laser engraved uh, back weight for that automatic movement. You can see it kind of spin around there. The other thing you'll notice on the back of this is this is a limited edition and this is serial number 100 and two of 500 made in this specific color combination. Now the leather straps, these are Hornween leather. Very nice. I mean, I've felt nicer straps. They're not horrible, um, but they're not great either. Uh, right there on that buckle, you see the Zurich logo. And there's the other edge of the strap with the Zurich logo imprinted right on the back. The one thing that I do really like about this, and for some reason I'm a huge fan of Roman numerals, so I love that stainless steel um, applied Roman numerals at the indices. And then of course you guys know I'm a huge fan of red and black, so that is why I opted for this specific color combination. So if we want to jump over to Kickstarter for just a second, you can see I'm logged into my Kickstarter profile right here, and, and we are actually on the Atlaspheres page. What is the Atlasphere? Basically a bunch of different watches that uh, Zurich has put together. You can see my pledge right here. $289 is what I paid for this Zurich Atlasphere. <clears throat> and I selected the Red Automatic. Red Automatic is the one that I selected. You can see right there. This campaign finished up, I want to say it was like right around November uh, 2018. And with an estimated delivery date of January 2019. Now, I, of course, don't live near a extremely easy place to get mail to. So I'm typically a little late, but a good portion of the early backers received this Zurich Atlasphere in the middle to end of January, uh, I received mine February 1st, so that's that's not too bad. Zurich is one of those companies that when they say they're going to deliver by a certain date, um, in my experience, this is the third Zurich watch that I have backed on Kickstarter. In my experience, they, they're pretty rock solid as far as their delivery estimations. They've built enough different watches now that they understand the manufacturing process and what it's going to take to get the watches to their backers. They had an original Kickstarter goal of $10,000 and ended up raising $275,000 with 1,014 backers. Now you can see I was one of 94 backers that selected the red automatic. But if we scroll down here, you can see this is the Atlasphere. This is the blue version of the watch that I received. Uh, and then this is the GMT version. Now the GMT version caught my eye quite a bit. However, it is a quartz watch. This quartz uh, GMT is actually running a Miyota movement as well. <clears throat> For whatever reason, I just opted to go with the automatic on this one. The quartz was a little bit cheaper and it did have, uh, it did have a couple different dial designs to it. You can see as we scroll down, bunch of different places uh, featured this Atlasphere. Now, Zurich Watches is pretty good with marketing, so you can see they get into all sorts of different um, media outlets to, to advertise their product. We scroll, scroll down the orbiting moon indicator. A lot of the Zurich Watches have a, uh, a space design to them, but this graphic right here is what I wanted to show you. It kind of gives the impression that it's doing something funky. Um, little did I know that it was just the numbers printed on the sapphire glass. But again, that could be just because I wasn't paying close attention when I backed this. Now, 
One other thing I'm going to point out is um, this was especially true with my Xeric Trappist 1, but I've read quite a bit lately um, about people really disliking um, the loom on their Xeric watches. Xeric watches are notorious for not having great loom. Um, the Trappist 1, although it looked really good, um, when you when you first charged it under bright bright light it faded very very quickly so I'll be interested to see if the loom on this guy is any different I'll scroll down a little bit more again there's the gold color combination with the GMT version the Quartz GMT as well as the automatic. Just pointing out everything's individually numbered. American Horween leather. These do have interchangeable straps with quick release pins on them. And they had a whole slew of different strap designs that uh, you could select with these watches for an upgrade. See that GMT, you know, I'm... I'm <laughs> partially kind of kicking myself right now for not at least picking up the GMT. It wasn't really that expensive, um, and uh, it is pretty slick, just the design to it. And there's the red GMT. Actually, you know what, hindsight being 2020, I should have gotten the red GMT quartz and the red automatic just to compare them to one another. But these are the different color combinations that it comes with. Again, I'm going to take some close-up pictures of this watch afterwards. Um, if you wait around towards the end of the video, I will also charge the loom on this watch. And I'll do a time lapse on um, this watch with the loom to see how quickly this guy fades. And see if it suffers the same issues that a lot of the previous Zurich watches did. Now, I do know if you're interested in purchasing any of these watches... Um, you can head over to Zurich.com or Watches.com and pick them up. I believe they might have the automatics back in stock, um, but just check it out. I'll post up a link in the description section below. Again, these are the different straps that it came with. You could have gotten the GMT on some stainless steel shark mesh. Um, it's interesting that they would have put the GMT. This is the exact same strap that they used on the Trappist 1. Uh, so just a few different color combinations. The automatics, by the way, do have 20 millimeter wide strap. The GMTs are 22 millimeters wide, so they have a little bit bigger strap as well. Anyway, guys, that is the Zurich Atlasphere from Zurich Watches. Most recent watch that I received in from their Kickstarter campaign. Guys, if you want to see this watch on my wrist, again, don't forget to check out Instagram slash watchaddiction.us. Uh, every single day I'm wearing a watch, posting up a new watch there, so uh, you guys can take a quick look at what I have in my collection. Also, guys, don't forget to follow us in the future. We have been releasing new watches, new videos every Wednesday. I try to target Wednesday because it's right in the middle of the week. It gives me something to do um, over the weekend and uh, get it ready for Wednesday and then gives you guys something to watch into the weekend. Anyway, guys, post up in the comments section below. Let me know what you think of this Zurich Atlasphere, if it's something that you guys would like in your collection or if it's something you guys absolutely hate. Post up in the description section below and let me know what you think. Anyway, guys, I am going to get out of here. Have a great week, and we will see you next week.